Keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer is the old saw. How about this one? A man without enemies is a fool. Has anyone said that? If not, let me say it now. A man without enemies is a fool, a patsy, and a danger to himself and the whole community. There are those handful of benighted souls who float through the turmoil and madness of life as if everything were cream cheese. I met a minister of a local church like that once, a man incapable of seeing darkness at the bottom of a cave. A psychotherapist friend of mine deemed this smiling goon psychopathic and incapable of help. Whenever I find myself in the proximity of one of these rose-colored glass glasses people, I find myself muttering, you know, if there were a foxhole in a ground war and we were in it together, I'd have to shoot you because you would get both of us killed. It's nice to have many dear friends, and it's wonderful to feel love and kindness towards most people. But don't think for a moment that these bounties will free you from the burden of evil in our midst. Double dealers on every corner, at the very least, people whose political opinions are different enough from your own to make your toes curl and your hair fall out in clumps. One of the ways we define ourselves is by what we are and what we believe and what, if anything, we stand for. Equally useful is to know what we are not, what we cannot stomach or abide, and what we very much turn on our heels away from. I love my enemies only so much as they remind me of what I am not. And here's an important consideration. The enemy is almost never bearing arms or scowling at us from behind barbed wire or prison bars. No, it's exactly the opposite. The enemy is usually flashing the most startling, pearly white smiles. He's inviting us into his kingdom of deception and loss, and uh, he's agreeing with us through half-truths and fake accommodations. A friend of mine, or at least I thought he was a friend at the time, wanted to spend a few winter months doing some writing in Venice, Italy, and he prevailed upon me to see what my Venice friends might do for him. So Meg gave this son of a bitch her beautiful flat in a very quiet local neighborhood in Venice for roughly the cost of the heating. Full of gratitude and thankfulness, off he went and proceeded to write snide, arrogant, ungracious garbage about all the Venetians who were kind to him, who also happened to be friends of mine. Then he told everyone who would listen the most outrageous lies and gossip about me, conveniently, conveniently forgetting that I was the one who found this basically free ride for him. When he returned to town, he acted as if, oh, none of this had ever happened. In spite of his efforts to reach me, I never spoke to him again. Pickle. Enemies are real. Keep a good eye on them and smile right back as if you don't get it. Ah.